Hi there, first graders. It's Miss Perry. We are one day closer to the end of this packet. This is day 28. Remember your teacher's office hours are 9.15 to 10.15 and 1.15 to 2.15. I hope everyone had a fantastic weekend. Remember, you need to go pick up the new packet at Smithfield, which is available all week. So we are on day 28. It is not May 8th, it is May 11th, and that's okay. For math, you're gonna play a mystery coin game. You're gonna ask a family member to be your partner. You're going to choose a coin without telling your partner what you have, so it's a secret. Your partner should ask questions to determine the name of your mystery coin. Once your partner figures out your mystery coin, then switch roles. Here are some example questions below that you can ask. Who is on the front of the coin? What is on the back of the coin? Is it silver or brown? Is it worth blank cents? So you don't want to give it away to them. You just want to answer yes or no. Also in your math notebook, you're going to answer, what is the value of a quarter in pennies? So how much is a quarter worth? And how many pennies do you need to make that? I've included a sentence starter. A quarter is equal to the value of blank pennies. And then it asks, how do you know? Again, your sentence starter is, I know this because, that should be done in your math notebook, and there should be a picture that goes to your teacher. For reading, you're going to watch the module video for day 28. This link will also be in the description below the video and in your daily dojo message. You're going to listen to the article, What's Best? The Debate About Pale Male's Nest. You're going to think and talk about the most compelling reason to leave the nest up. So we're talking about the bird watchers. You're going to write about the most compelling reason to leave the nest up. Write a draft of an opinion paragraph supporting the bird watchers. So here's kind of what it's going to be looking like. You're going to be using the opinion paragraph note catcher from day 25. That's further back in your packet. You're going to choose the opinion of the bird watchers and write why it's the most compelling. This means the best reason. So the most compelling means the best reason. You're going to write a paragraph. Now this sounds super tricky, but you can do it because you've already set up everything you need. So you're going to write a paragraph using your note catcher by pulling off the information and writing the sentences together. So I included that little side phrase of the opinion paragraph where you have your introduction, your opinion statement, your reason, and your conclusion. So remember the introduction, you're introducing what the topic is that you're writing about. Remember you're writing from the opinion of the bird watcher. Then the opinion statement is whatever you wrote that tells the reader the opinion of the bird watchers or what, what they think about it. Then the reason is coming from the text. So you're pulling something from Pale Male's Nest to back up what you think the opinion is. And then the conclusion wraps up your paragraph it ends your sentences, it tells the reader that you're done with that thought, and it reminds the reader of the opinion that you're writing about. So there are two parts to this. The first part says, what is the most compelling reason for keeping the nest up? So you're really picking out from the article what the most important reason is. What's the best reason? Your sentence starter is the most compelling reason to keep the nest up is blank because blank. Where there's yellow, that's where you add in your thinking. 
After you've done that, you're going to write a draft of an opinion paragraph to support keeping the nest up. So that's where your note catcher comes in from day 25. You're going to pull off your thoughts and make sentences. You should pause the video here so that you really understand what you're doing. Remember, you need to see your teacher at office hours if you're struggling with this because we are so ready as first grade teachers to help you do this. After that, you have your word work. There is a link for day 28 instructional video. The link is going to be in the dojo message in the description box. Remember, these videos do a great job of teaching the skill for word work. Today's activity for word work is super sentences. You're going to choose words from the cycle 21 word list that I've listed below and use them to write five first grade sentences. Remember to use a capital letter at the beginning of your sentence and punctuation at the end. Here are your words. You can pause the video here and pick five words from the slide. You have pain, tail, mail, sail, clean, beach, eat, dream, scream, squeak, boat, coat, throat, toast, raincoat. Woo, that was a lot of words. So remember, pause the video, pick five words. Remember, you're writing super awesome first grade sentences. We're gonna go over that in the next slide. So I have to think to myself, how should my sentence look when I think I'm done? Hmm, I'm thinking I'm done, so I'm gonna go through all of these points and see if all of my sentence follows it. The first one's easy. Do I have a capital letter at the beginning of my sentence? I hope so, because that's what a big first grade sentence has. The next one is, did I use punctuation at the end of my sentence? So did I put a period or an exclamation point or a question mark? Hmm. The third thing is, are my word list words and site words spelled correctly? Oh my goodness. I sure hope that those are words that are spelled correctly. The fourth thing is, did I write a strong first grade sentence? Remember back in that other video how I wrote the black cat is eating or something like that? That's not a strong first grade sentence. A strong verse first grade sentence gives adjectives, it gives detail. You want to make it interesting so your first grade teacher wants to read it. The last thing you need to think about is did I use my best handwriting so my first grade teacher can read it? And I use finger spaces so my words aren't all squished together and look like one big long word. I know that sounds super funny. So you can pause the video here again after you're done writing your sentences and go back and fix them. Finally, we have science energy transfer. So it says in the packet, giraffes have long necks that they use to reach the leaves in tall trees. They also have long tongues that they use to wrap around the leaves and branches to pull up the leaves. The question is, how many times a day do you eat to get energy? So a giraffe is so big that it eats all day long. You're gonna use this information to create a food train, chain for a, a giraffe. So I've included a next example on the slide. So here on this slide, I have carrots that are growing. They are taking energy from the sunlight. Now, when they take the energy to, from the sunlight, we're gonna to go to the second picture. The carrots grow. They also use the nutrition from the so, the nutri nutrients from the soil. When they're done growing, there are people that like to eat carrots, and bunnies like to eat carrots. Bunnies eat carrots to get energy as well. So there's a simple food chain of how the sun helps the carrots, the soil helps the carrots, the
the carrots help the bunny rabbit. Finally, you have specials. There are lots of options to choose from. In addition to playing outside, it is supposed to be beautiful all week long. I can't wait to see some faces on Zoom this week. Remember, if you need help, especially with the writing assignment, please, please, please go see your first grade teacher at office hours. Have a great day.